Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And uh, I'd like to first of all thanks Vatikudi Foundation again for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I started to do the robotic donor nephrectomy when we acquired the robot in the end of 2011. And uh, here I'll present briefly, along with my experience, what the evidence we have uh, regarding uh, the robotic donor nephrectomy worldwide. Uh, I'll start with briefly mentioning about the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. When in 90s this came up into being, first started by Ratner, there was initial reservation about the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy as well, uh, regarding the warm ischemia, how safe it is, what's going to be the graft survival. And we have come a long way since, and now it has become the gold standard way uh, for doing the donor nephrectomy. We all are aware of uh, the steep learning curve for the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. Now, minimally invasive donor nephrectomy, uh, we already have a paucity of donor pool, and a minimally donor uh, invasive donor nephrectomy goes a long way in trying uh, to increase the donor pool for, for the renal transplant. Now here I would like to say at the outset that there is no overwhelming scientific evidence which is in favor of robotic donor nephrectomy over laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. But we also have to see that there is no scientific evidence against the robotic donor nephrectomy either. First, I will present this article which came out in 2015 from Nadiad, uh, which uh, prospectively uh, randomized uh, uh, between robotic and laparoscopic donor nephrectomy in a ratio of 1 is to 2. And what it, this showed was that there was a decreased donor morbidity, decreased analgesic requirements, and an average discharge of 1.5 days as opposed to 2.5 days with laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. It was found to be ergonomically easier for the donor surgeon. It showed some benefit in dissecting the right artery on the right side, thereby giving an increased arterial length on the right side in the donor nephrectomy, which may be relevant in, especially in people who have early bifurcation of the right donor artery. And the graft survival was found to be comparable with the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. Cohen et al. in Oshner Journal showed uh, an experience, a retrospective analysis of 120 donor nephrectomies done over a four-year period between 2008 and 12. There were 100 robotic and 20 laparoscopic donor nephrectomy, and they said that it does not compare negatively against laparoscopic donor nephrectomy and is a safe procedure to perform. Hubert et al. in 2002 had shown initial experience of 38 robotic donor nephrectomy, and they said that it is ergonomically easier for the surgeons and enhances the laparoscopic skills of the donor surgeon due to the magnification and also with the robotic instruments. Learning curve of laparoscopic donor nephrectomy was commented upon in 2015 by Cabra et al. When in their center they moved from open to laparoscopic donor nephrectomies and they looked at the initial 100 laparoscopic donor nephrectomies being done, in a high volume center they found that the learning curve plateau was not reached even after 50 cases. Although it was found to be safe, but they mentioned at that time it should be done in centers where there is a high volume laparoscopic urological surgery being done. Serrano et al. in 2016 showed that the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy learning curve is median learning curve is 24 cases. So there is a steep learning curve with the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. Sandro et al. did a meta-analysis of five papers which had detailed about the results of robotic donor nephrectomy along with the technique, combining with their own 33 cases. A total of 292 cases were retrospectively analyzed and they concluded that the robotic donor nephrectomy is significantly easier for the surgeons and results are comparable to the laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. Highs et al. have also compared did a multicentric comparative study of 226 laparoscopic and 50 robotic donor nephrectomies over a period of 12 years. And they said that it is feasible, although the warm ischemia time and the operating time was reported as higher compared to laparoscopic, but the graft survival was comparable. Yang et al. in 2017 also showed a perioperative outcome and the postoperative follow-up regarding the graft survival in robotic versus laparoscopic donor nephrectomies over a period of uh, five years, 95 cases, and they found that the robotic donor nephrectomy, first of all, 
does not negatively impact the outcome. The operating time and warm ischemia time were found to be comparable. Learning curve was shown to be shorter with the robotic, and it was suitable for newer surgeons. Now, my experience uh, of robotic donor nephrectomy since 2012, we have done more than 285 robotic donor nephrectomies till now, although I have analyzed data for 150. Majority were left side, but all multiple arteries were also taken up. And in my experience, I found it to be more beneficial for dissection of the artery on the right side. Uh, the median console time uh, was 90 minutes. Creatinine at discharge was 1.2. The graft survival at one year with a creatinine of less than 1.5 was 92%. To conclude, I would just like to say, you know, we have been having this debate of uh, robotic donor nephrectomy replacing laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. That is not the case at all. We are having one more method to do a laparoscopic donor nephrectomy in a much better way, possibly enhancing the scope for people who may find laparoscopic donor nephrectomy to be much more difficult, as earlier uh, laparoscopic experience is not essential to do a robotic donor nephrectomy. It possibly may add, it can't sort of harm, but possibly may add one more method to try and increase the donor pool we have. It definitely has been shown to have a shorter learning curve, and uh, at least it has not been proven to be unsafe. Cost, I think that's some issue which was more relevant maybe four years ago, is becoming less and less important each year. Thank you.